Good evening, and welcome again to Public Perspective. I'm your host, Kevin McDermott. And we hear a lot today, and we've heard a lot over the years about culture and how to change culture, and particularly the culture of personal responsibility and what it means for our country and for individuals. So tonight as our guest, we have Glenn Barker, who is the executive director of the Chicago Mankind Project, talking about how men in particular need to uh, understand what personal accountability is and how to take that responsibility for their own actions. So Glenn, thank you so much for being uh, on the show. Thank you for having me, Kevin. Pleasure. Well, before we uh, get started, um, or as a way to get started, let's talk a little bit about what the Mankind Project is, how it got started, well, who belongs, what the purpose of it is. Okay. So let's just start with the history. What, where does it come from? Well, the Mankind Project was a vision of three men who uh, thought they would benefit if men could me mentor each other in circle. Uh, and so they started that campaign and started to find men that wanted to take personal responsibility for their lives. And then they discovered that um, just sitting and talking wasn't doing quite cutting it either. They needed something deeper, more profound. So they created a breakthrough kind of weekend where men could really emotionally unwrap or unpack their lives and really take a look at them and then put together processes so that ongoing they can support each other in circle. Well, what, what prompted it? I mean, well, there's usually some sort of event that someone will experience and think, oh, gee, that, that was somehow off the tracks and we got to do something different. Yes, we're talking 25 years ago and there was a massive women's movement going on, a lot of empowerment for women. And I believe in part it was because they thought that men were being a little left behind. Hmm. And, and there was a lot of profound uh, writers, uh, Robert Bly and Robert Moore, started springing up with men's books you know, about the psyche of men and how men learn different and, uh, and that uh, they weren't learning their emotional lessons from women who were trying to help them. They needed their own. And so that was, that was part of the impetus too. So is it, um, there's, particularly in today's culture where there seems to be a very um, hard edge to uh, American culture right now, uh, I can envision some critics saying, oh, it's that touchy-feely, lefty-wacko stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, real men, uh, don't worry about that stuff. Um, I'm sure you must hear those kinds of criticisms. What, what, how do you uh, respond to that kind of approach or someone who takes that perspective? Well, then I would ask them to explain to you what do real men do then, right? So if real men are the non-feeling uh, wage earner, um, robotic, or heroic, uh, you know, single-dimensional person, that's a very shallow existence. And um, I think owning your range of emotion, being empowered by a discovery of who you are and what your gifts are, uh, the way to be a blessing to other, your family, your church, you know, in your society. Um, these come through emotional intelligence and awareness and taking responsibility. Um, that's not touchy-feely. That's being real. And in, when you say um, real and you talk about these other groups like uh, influencing your family or your church or your community, um, and I just to, to play devil's advocate for mm -hmm. a moment, uh, I would envision some men, maybe many, I don't know, coming back and saying, well, you know, I work very hard. I, you know, opened a chain of stores or whatever, mm -hmm. or uh, I have become a captain of industry, or I just mm -hmm. work very hard at, at my particular job, and I do. I do a really good job where I am, and I bring home the money, and I put food on the table for my kids, and I sent them to school, and, and I'm doing my job as, as, a, as a man. And, and what is this extra thing that, that we're talking about? Well, my question to you would be, uh, if you are absolutely happy with your life and you've got everything you want, do you have the kind of relationships that you bond in a way that's satisfying? You're not living in regrets. If you're not leaving other people behind in your pursuits, if you're doing all this in a good way, you have a good life. No, you don't need this. This is not for everybody. So that brings us to the question then. Who is this aimed at? Who is the person that you want to bring in to the Mankind Project? Okay. Because Mankind is not a single uh, solution organization, um, let's walk through some maybe stages of a man's life. Mm -hmm. right? So a man in his 20s, what might he be interested? What might draw him to being mentored by other men? Well, he wants how to, to make... How to pick up girls, which bars to go to. No. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, you know, how am I going to get my car? How am right. I going to get a lot of money? This is, this is defining himself possibly as what he can do to be uh, you know, big in the eyes of women or, or whatever. And these are things he's aspiring to, and he's looking uh, possibly for models to uh, 
to go after. Mm -hmm. You know, what, 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 how can I get things in my life? And um, that sets a pattern up too of this is how he may show up at 40 saying, is this all I am? This wage earner, this chasing, or this satisfying only by what I can create out there in order to give over here. Where am I in all this? So a man in his 20s may be looking at what he can achieve. So we'll ask him also to understand who he is and that if he can live his life out of an expression of, of who he is, that it may be more enriching for him and that he sees this going forward. A uh, man in his 40s may be turning around saying, is this all I am? A breadwinner, right? a provider. Where, where am I? I'm losing my vision I had when I was a young man about what my life was going to be like because I got caught up in all that. By the time a man's in his 50s, he's just about ready to say enough. I, I've seen the pattern. And if I could have done it by now, myself, I would have. And I'm not, it's not happening. So at different stages of a man's life, we may find different basic categories of awareness or lack of awareness. So at, got them there. at which stage might they become interested in the Mankind Project? Uh, men come to the Mankind Project sometimes of their own volition. You know, there'll be, uh, uh, maybe there's a divorce going on. So that man starts to seek help. Uh, mostly we're word of mouth though. There's men, enough men have gone through, 40,000 men have gone through this organization now that recognize the distance a man has from his family. And they'll say, listen, I, I went through this a few years ago and it's really improved my life. Would you mm -hmm. want to come with me to a, a circle one day and talk about what's going on with you? So that happens most often. So is it, it's generally precipitated by some sort of crisis in the life that makes someone sit back and say, wait a minute. I didn't expect this. This is something I didn't want, didn't plan for, and yet I'm here. Usually, I, I, we come across men for three reasons, and that's and that's the most obvious. A man's in pain. All right, something's going on. He's, it's a tough time for him. Uh, I see that as men really having only two pillars they stand on: their a couple of personal, interpersonal relationships, and their work. You know, if one of those goes, this guy's in trouble. So right. if they get laid off, or they go through a divorce, well, or maybe both, right. or they lose a house in foreclosure. Right. The man starts, he doesn't have, uh, many times I don't see a man has built up other parts of his character and, and, and personal value and worth if it isn't tied to one of those two things in, in an inappropriately large way. So uh, uh, it's interesting that you mention that because I, I think about, uh, from a larger perspective, from a cultural perspective, that really is defined as the role for men, particularly in America, and I think that it mm -hmm. has. There were times when that role had started to change. I think during the, the really the kind of almost cultural revolution we had in this country in the 60s, there were different perspectives being brought to bear. Mm -hmm. But since then, I think we've gone back to a, a much more um, uh, traditionalist, or at least a, a style in America, a culture in America that harkens back to an earlier age, where men are seen as being the, the tough guy. Um, you know, we have a um, the military is very much in the news. You know, we see the advertising on TV, be all that you can be, be the strong, hard military man that you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we lionize the captains of industry, the people who are in the Fortune 500. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we see some of that changing now with, for instance, the Occupy Wall Street movement, which is saying, well, wait a minute, there's other values here. Um, mm -hmm. So where do you think this comes from? And is there an effort on the part of the Mankind Project or related efforts not just at the individual level, but maybe at the societal level, to change a perspective on what are the right roles to play. Indeed there is. In fact, our mission is changing the world one man at a time. And we have 40 centers in the United States and on five continents. And so, yes, we do see this as a world uh, movement. To answer your question around, I say, the, the condi social conditioning that men, the story that they make up, even if it's not put into them, I call it, a, you know, it's a little box. Men live mm -hmm. in a very small box. And um, to feel safe enough to explore outside that box, um, I think it needs to be provided for them by other men. You know, what's missing uh, in large part in this nurturing, growing, maturing of men so they move through these stages of their lives in a responsible way, being um, accountable to what they do and realizing the impact of their actions. We can have mentors in business. You know, we can have mentors in other sure, in areas. Sure, it's encouraged. Yes. Right. Where is it in your personal growth into your mature masculine? Well, wouldn't that be the role in a traditional family, though, of the father? And by the time a young man is 21 or 22, he's off doing his own thing, and 
theoretically, the father is still there and can guide him through the various stages. Uh, yes, you would, you would think that, and the fathers in the home are, are another big crisis piece, you know that, mm -hmm. keeping fathers in the home these right. days. But typically also, the father and son, um, it really needs grandfathers and uncles. It's really these other men in their lives, because father and son, there will be, always be many times a barrier between oh. father and son uh, for getting the right kind of teaching. I'm not saying it doesn't have value, but many times, uh, if we can go back and talk about traditional cultures, say, where they would take men, when they started to get you know, 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. and they'd take them out of the villages. And it was all the other warriors that would teach them how to do things. And the grandfathers, they were all like uncles and grandfathers, mm -hmm. right? And they would tell them the stories of how to raise families and what the traditions of the culture was and what your responsibility was. Sometimes those things can be heard by others easier than in your own family. So, uh, if I, and I'm about to venture into an area that I really don't know a lot about, but if I think about um, American Indian uh, tribes, where there, many of them um, had these kind of lodges where the men would get together of mm -hmm. all generations, mm -hmm. and, and I assume that, that that's the same kind of thing you're talking about here, where it's that multi-generational man-to-man uh, -man talking about, okay, yeah. look, here's, here's what it means to, as you grow up. Here's your responsibilities. Yeah. Here's what you have to do, yeah. um, and here's what's valuable. And sometimes it's easier to say, Kevin, I don't have this family relationship or boundaries or problems. Talk to me. Tell me what's happening with you. Sometimes it's easier with someone, a caring mentor in this area rather than immediate family. Sometimes it's even easier. And we provide that. Uh, in fact, just not to sound flippant, which I don't mean to be here, but uh, I read about the fact that uh, bartenders frequently end up serving these roles because they're not part of the family. Yeah. They're just the guy behind the bar, mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. unload to them because yeah. you're, no, you're not threatening me. This is not going to come back and hurt me later by telling you this now. Exactly. Exactly. It's a non-threatening, safe environment, and that's, there's very little. Uh, where, and mankind's a very rare find for that, a safe environment where men can explore the depth, not just the surface stuff, the depth of their feelings. Right? So they can explore this and then give it language, right? So that they can get out of that little box and be able to own a bigger space around them. And then the boundaries can come back because the threat of being exposing yourself or being shamed by feeling weak today or inept today can be talked about and break through that barrier. So what are the practical effects of this? If someone joins the mankind project mm -hmm. and spends whatever a typical amount of time would be a few weeks a few years whatever that would be mm -hmm. uh, what kind of changes happen as a result of this well because every man's journey is his own you know s some men have a struggle for something their whole lives that they should maintain their whole lives and they can even keel they're happy so I can maybe you know I can maybe speak to my own personal experience mm -hmm. what what I can grow and do um, being a big dreamer I can now be with men that, that say, Glenn, when are you going to make that step? Have you set a course for this? How can I support you? And I say, well, I'm sabotaging this. I can say that now. You know, I'm undermining this by my own inaction on something. Uh, you can, you can.